fight to raise awareness of breast cancer evolved here in North Texas. I spoke to Nancy Brinker, whose sister died of breast cancer, prompting her to launch the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation in 1982. It all started in Dallas because I was living there doing my first job <clears throat> in life. And um, after graduation from college, and I had my, my aunt and uncle live there. And that's why I came is because I adored them. And they, they offered to give me a place to live because my dad told me it was time to be self-sufficient. And I could, ne I could never make enough money to have my own apartment. So <laughs> my aunt and uncle had a great apartment. <laughs> And they were lovely to me. And I just grew to love the city. You know, I, I just grew up there. Moved there when I was 21 and left when I was uh, 51. Excellent. So. You are, and very rightly so, credited with launching this global fight against breast cancer. But it came at a cost, a yeah. huge personal cost. It did indeed. And until Susie was diagnosed, how little did I know seven years later, she would be diagnosed at the age of 33 of a very deadly breast cancer. And she lived in our hometown of Illinois, in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, we were able to get her to Houston to MD Anderson at the time, which was one of the only cancer centers in the country. And um, they, they, their caregiving was wonderful. But at the time, we didn't know enough about cancer. And she died very painfully. Two, two years later, and uh, 1980. And at what point did your grief say, it's not enough for me to just be heartbroken, I've got to do something about this? It was right before she died, a few weeks before she died. And, and I walked over to her and I, was, I, I grasped her hand and she looked up, up at me because she would never talk about dying, she would only talk about living. And so she said, Nanny, I want you to help me someday. I want you to cure breast cancer. I want you to do everything you can in your lifetime to do that. Brinker has since moved to Florida and established the Promise Fund, the next chapter in her crusade to rid the world of breast cancer. That 85,000 women in our county had no access to care, no insurance, no medical home, no screenings, cervical or breast screening or frequent Z with a primary care physician. And um, that really bothered me. And then <clears throat> friends of mine gave me the reports of the area and I said, how can this be? We live in one of the wealthiest communities in the world. How could we have this kind of poverty and lack of care? Well, we have a lot of for-profit hospitals. Um, we do not have enough Medicaid. I think most people feel that way now in the state of Florida. And a lot of that is not just the politicians' fault, but a lot of it is that right now and for the last couple of years, we've had up to 2,000 people a day moving into our state. Uh, and some of them very uninformed. They think because they read all these very, very wealthy people are moving here that there's enough infrastructure. There really isn't. Fortunately, came upon the Federally Qualified Healthcare Center, which is a wonderful federal program, and we have some very good ones here, who render primary care we made a uh, partnership with them. I was able to get a great piece of equipment from Hologic, and we installed the first 3D mammogram machine in a center like this. And, and uh, since that time, we have either screened, navigated, uh, or treated and educated for sure over 10,000 women. And we intend to keep going until we finish that census of people who haven't had care. But in the decades that you have been involved in this fight, are you shocked to see that there are still so many women, not just in your community there, but across the country, in yes. in Fort Worth, across the country, right. who do not have access to this care? What was your reaction to that? This, this exactly, your thank you for wording it so appropriately. It was, my, my reaction was first of all, disbelief. Disbelief. When I, when I really got to look, and then I started reading the numbers, and we started working with a very, very smart healthcare consultant <clears throat> here in, in Florida. And I was so shocked, almost sick to my stomach when I saw this. I thought for 50 years, almost, we have had a war on cancer. We have science that when I started Susan Coleman in the 48, 38 years I was there, uh, funded 
well over three billion dollars in in translational research given to scientists who really have struck a path of success for many patients and looked at it though and realized as much care as we did in the 140 cities at one time that we were in reaching outreaching still in america today we probably have 15 to 20 percent of our population who have no cancer care due to lack of affordability and access this is unacceptable and that's why i decided to dig in once again and say it's unacceptable and we're going to deliver a model that any community in this country albeit the world can follow it's not that hard it takes a lot of human will courage to take on some people and uh, understanding what needs to be done. And is that the mission of the Promise Fund now? Yes, ma'am, it is. And we have a very, we have so organized this work so that our expenses to, to do this are only invested in a few staff members. And we have obviously to print some materials and pay for some outside services, but we are a very lean organization because we are a community organization and we realize we would much better spend our time and effort building a model that is replicable anywhere and uh that's what we're doing we then par partnered with the federally qualified health care center and we have made partnerships with seven other entities in the county who are trying to do what we do and together since last january we have been able to create um, a, a successful interaction on one of these levels with 10,000 women already who are at risk. Now, Ms. Brinker, what I hear you saying is that even before COVID, there was a segment of our population that wasn't taking advantage of the screening, that wasn't, wasn't able to get access to care if diagnosed. So what has COVID done, even for those who have insurance, who have access to care? How has COVID made this fight more difficult? It's made it extremely difficult. Um, there, are, there are numbers that reflect that, that the amount of screening that hasn't been done by women who are ready for their next screening or one they never had, it, mammography screening and cervical screening, is as much as 87 to 98 percent down so we know what that means we know that sometimes people don't present for these screenings unless they feel they have an issue that they need to address so already there might be an early cancer <clears throat> and we also know that the best way to detect an early cancer is to have first of all be in the hands of a good primary care physician who can sort of spot things that he thinks or she thinks might be a problem and then direct you to care but in this case we don't even have enough primary physicians here who do that and when i saw this and kept seeing it again i had to go prove it to myself i had to go look really drive the county drive the landscape and see what was going on and it brought it home to me in a way that was very painful, very painful, because I had assumed that with all the work so many of us had done since the war on cancer, we were making more progress than we were. We're not applying what we know. We are not applying what we know. And COVID has been disastrous in, in the goals. But we now that we things are a little better in Florida where COVID goes, we're able now once again to reach out to patients. Uh, the, our navigators uh, are a big part of this. You know, navigators are uh, a cross between social workers and nurses, and we have nine of them. And they are now much more comfortable going out into the community, educating patients and doing what they do because COVID is now receding, it, it seems, and they feel safer going out to bring more people in. What then is your message for folks in, in, in North Texas? I know you don't want them to be complacent, Mm -hmm. I know you want them to know that the fight is still happening, but on a different level. What is your message for folks here in, in North Texas who know your name and your sister's name so well? The, the message is, if you have access to a, to a computer or even a mobile device, plug in the names of, or even just plug in breast cancer or the promisefund.org, the promisefundofflorida.org. Uh, or the Susan Komen has great information, a great website, or the American Cancer Society. Try to plug in to one of these places somehow and get their <clears throat> directive for breast screening. 
Then the other part would be, I would always suggest that if there is no care in your area, then try to find one of the federally qualified health care centers. They don't always provide mammographic screening, but they will have other services and they will help you guide you where to go. A lot of talk and action about what organizations are doing to help cancer patients.